Good afternoon. My name is Peng Yao. I'm a research scientist working in phase sensitive innovations, a R&D company specialized in RF microwave photonics. First, I want to thank Navy STP program for supporting this presentation, and our STP consultant Paul Essig for his help in preparing these slides. Today's talk is about our phase two work regarding high-performance broadband photonic links based on multi-core fiber and balanced detection. This work is sponsored by Navair, and our TPOC is Ms. Abidam Basinan. Face Sensitive Innovations is a R&D small business that originally spun out from Dr. Dennis Prezer's research group in University of Delaware in 2007. Over the years, we have grown to be the industrial leader in microwave photonic systems and components, with more than 60 employees. Sponsored by many government agencies such as Navy, Air Force, and NASA, we are now front runner in millimeter wave imaging, photonic based phased array, and broadband RF generation, photonic enabled MIMO communication system, and photonic integrated circuits, etc. Our main commercial products include high-speed EO modulators, high-power photodiodes, RF photonic links, and tunable optical pair sources. We recently opened a new facility that is a couple miles from UD campus, and we have built a 16,500 square feet nanofib and packaging facility. We have started using this clean room from this March. The motivation of this work is the continuous movement to higher data rate, broader bandwidth, and high, higher frequencies for essentially every component, sensor, and system in today's world. Being able to sense, detect, analyze, react to those high frequency signals is very, very critical for our warfighter to perform and win a mission. As the frequency increases, a fundamental problem arises too. The problem is that how we can transport the high frequency signal from point A to point B over distance. This figure summarizes the calculated coax cable and waveguide attenuation over frequencies. So what it shows here are the best scenario data. Here, the dashed green line shows the loss per meter for one millimeter cable, which can support broadband from DC to 110 gigahertz. The purple line shows loss associated with 2.4 millimeter cable, which is good for 50 gigahertz. The curved lines are losses associated with waveguides. They have much lower loss compared to the coax cable, but are only limited to banded operations. And both coax cable and the metal waveguides are based on metal conductors, which are bulky, heavy and susceptible to electromagnetic interference. As a comparison, the bottom red solid line shows the loss of an optical fiber, which is flat across the entire frequency range that is interested by the commu communication industry. And it is made of glass, one of the most abundant and cheap material on Earth. In addition, it's small, light, more durable in harsh environment and inherently immune to EMI. So it is pretty safe to say that for any application that involves distance or higher speed, our photonic link is potentially a better candidate than the conventional RF cables. In a short noise limited link, the link parameters such as gain, noise figure, spruce free dynamic range, can be summarized in the upper left plot. It is clear that high photocurrent and the low mod modulator VPI are what we want here to improve overall link performance. Currently, most commercial system is close to 40 dB noise figure based on several volt VPI and less than 10 milliamp photocurrent. As a comparison, PSI has link products with about 20 dB noise figure thanks for our high power photodiode and low VPI modular products. In practice, 
The link system noise is also limited by the laser source, namely the relative intensity noise, or RIN, as shown in the upper right plot. In a RIN-limited link system, increasing photocurrent cannot improve the system effectively, as both link gain and link noise floor are proportional to the square of the photocurrent. As a result, a noisy source will clip the system noise curve at the bottom, as shown in the upper right plot. To improve the link noise performance beyond ring limit, we will need either an ultra-low ring laser source or somewhat, somehow uh, reject the ring noise. The state-of-art laser technology has a ring of about minus 170 dBc per hertz which is clearly not enough for link system seeking for about 10 dB noise figure. Therefore, the only vi viable solution is to cancel the ring noise using a balanced detection link. The challenge of a balanced link is that we need to provide an accurate fiber lines matching between the two fiber arms. It is very difficult for a broadband link if two separate fibers are used. In this work, we will develop a perfect lens matching balanced detection link using a multi-core fiber. In our preliminary experimental demo, we have successfully suppressed the laser ring by 25 dB. This result, if combined with ultra-low WePi thin film listening bit modulator and high-power photodiode that PSI has developed, will make it possible to achieve a photonic link with 10 dB or lower noise figure. This, if realized, will be a very significant breakthrough of photonic link technology, which will make photonic link the clear, clearly superior choice over conventional metal cables for a vast number of applications. The proposed R photonic link consists of a commercial off-the-shelf laser a PSI dual-output much standard modulator, and a PSI high-power balanced photodiode. We use a dual-core, multi-core fiber to connect the modulator and the balanced receiver. Since both optical arms are located in the same fiber with a small distance in between, their path length is very well matched. So far, we have developed and demonstrated the key components, including the low VPI dual-output modulator, high-power balanced receiver, and the multi-core fiber patch cables. Using a benchtop setup and a COTS DFB laser, we have also demonstrated a balanced link that can surprise the laser ring by about 25 dB. This initial result shows the great potential of the multi-core fiber-based photonic link. This slide summarizes the five key milestones and the estimated timeline. We have demonstrated low VPI dual output modulator by coupling the, a, a multi-core fiber to the modulator chip. And we, we are now working on improving the optical insertion loss and the modulator package. Due to last year's pandemic and the gap between base year and the first option year, we are expecting several months delay for the first milestone. The balanced fold-out package is on schedule. We are expecting to accomplish this right after we start the option year. The third milestone has been completed. We have prepared a 100-meter-long 100, 100 multi-core fiber sample for path lens matching study in different environmental conditions. The fourth milestone uh, has been partially uh, achieved through the benchtop demo. Around March 2022, we will demonstrate a link with fully packaged components to meet the system noise figure requirement. In the second option year, we will recognize the link components and develop a system that is ready for platform test. As previously mentioned, the key advantage of our multi-core fiber-based photonic link is the broadband suppression of the laser ring. As a result, this makes possible to achieve a R-photonic link with 10 dB or lower noise figure. 
it is a big deal for two reasons. First, this means that Photonic Link outperforms, uh, outperforms coaxial cable for even short distance applications. For example, two meters at 50 gigahertz. Second, this may lead to a system using pure photonic link without using a low noise amplifier. Since LNA typically limits the link dynamic range and is susceptible for high power microwave attack, not using LNA will not only significantly improve the system spurs free dynamic range, but also eliminate the threat of HMP. Moreover, at the system level, having a ultra-low noise figure enables microwave photonic systems such as photonic phase array, photonic signal processing for many practical applications. Around 2023, we will test and demonstrate the multi-core fiber link property type in a relevant environment. At that point, we're hoping to transition this technology to Navy marine or avionic platforms for applications such like antenna remoting. We're also going to work with our existing customers in Air Force and defense companies for the potential transition. As mentioned previously, potential market of this technology is huge for both commercial and DoD applications. In commercial sector, we know that FCC continuously opened new spectrum bands for communications. Over the last 20 years, frequency bands such as EHF that was historically considered empty have been slowly filled. In February 2018, FCC even opened the millimeter wave and terahertz range for 5G applications. And this is not just true for US. The bandwidth congestion is everywhere worldwide. This table summarizes the aggregate worldwide uh, spectrum. At the bottom of this table, the dark blue bands show the allocated spectrum worldwide for com commercial communications. And the red colored bands are the atmosphere ad absorption bands. As you can see, the allocated bands almost filled from 0 to 100 gigahertz, with no doubt. The drastically increased frequency range will require new ways to transport and process the signals. For defense applications, the broad bandwidth, the size, weight power reduction, the EMI immunity, and the additional function, functions provided by the photonic link technology is very unique and urgently desired by our warfighter today. In our previous work, we have built a photonic link for Air Force and installed the link system in an active Air Force platform. With the breakthrough in link performance matrices under this effort, we believe that the multi-core fiber-based photonic link will become a very popular product in the potential markets. As we are developing the multi-core fiber link technology, we are actively looking for potential transition partners, including warfighter makers, primes, avionic system integrator, and the warfight program office. At the same time, we will demonstrate the full potential of this technology through the option years and hope to receive program extension and more fundings to ruggedize the link system and make it ready for platform integration and flight test. We will also commercialize the link products for potential commercial customers. This will conclude my talk today. Thanks for your time. We have a booth here. Please stop by if you have any questions. Thank you.